Emerson POV. We arrive at the school. I can feel the anger and confusion coming off of Avia in waves. I can understand after the rough start we have had hearing that Molly's condition could be because of her soulmate hits close to home with us. We hunt down the principal. We find him in his office. Come on in Alpha. He knows something is wrong because I walk in and close the door behind me. I look at him and say, I need to have access to the security video footage from today. The principal looks at me. Not a problem, Alpha. May I ask what's going on? Nodding my head. Something has happened to one of my pack members and has left her comatose. I want to know what. Jean jumps up. He is a lone werewolf that we have never had a problem with. He is a good wolf that runs this school well, especially when there are many different species that come here. We enter the security room in the school basement. Hey, Ed, take a break. The security guy gets up leaving the office without a backwards glance. Okay, Alpha, you have the room let me know if you need anything else. Taking a seat in the chair, I say, Thanks, Jean. Avia and I are alone in the office. I look at the controls and I'm really not sure what to do to get what I want. I'm more of a fighter than a game player, like Avia's brother. Avia laughs seeing the expression of confusion on my face. Okay, Wolfie scoot back a little so I can help. She says as she sits on my lap to get to the controls. Smiling at her laughter. Goddess, I love hearing that sound. Did she just give me an endearing name? I think I like it. What did you call me love? I see Avia's face become bright red. I'm sorry, if you don't want me to, I won't call you Wolfie again. I hug her laughing, kissing her on her cheek. I absolutely love it. Especially coming from you love. She turns her head, giving me a quick kiss. Okay, let's get to work. We start running through the footage from lunchtime. We both get the surprise of our life. The videos don't have sound, but we really didn't need it to understand what happened. We see the hallway where Molly is at her locker getting out books. Then we see River walking down the hallway at the same time he is about to pass Molly. She takes a step back. River runs right into her, causing Molly to drop her books as she bends down to pick them up. You can see River's eyes flash dark then back to their normal color. Emerson pauses the video. Well, that's a sure sign that Molly is River's fated mate. What do you think Avia? Avia doesn't say anything, just starts the video back up. We see Molly pick up her books, look up while standing up, and leans against the wall. We see River say something, then turn and walk away very fast. That was when Molly slides down the wall. Fifteen minutes later we see Drake walking in the hallway and see Molly. Avia stops the video. We sit there in silence. I'm waiting for what Avia wants to do. My love looks at me. You know me and Molly have formed a bond of sorts. We are not friends, but we aren't enemies either. I don't know River personally. What I do know of him is he is logical and down to earth. So, tell me Wolfie what would make him walk away after finding his fated mate. I look at her confused. I didn't know what to tell her. If it was a stranger that River found as his fated mate, he would never have left her. With all the history that Drake, River, Molly, and I have had and what they have seen me and Molly do and go through. I look at the she-wolf who stole my heart that I didn't even know I had. Love, I don't know what was going through his head. The River I know would never leave his fated mate. But when it comes to Molly, River has seen things that a mate should never see their fated doing with another. I don't want to hurt you by bringing this up, but you know that we were very sexually active and we weren't shy about showing it. I see my love's face morph into shock. 
I grab her hands not wanting to let go. Afraid of her running away from me and not being able to get her back. I'm looking at my love, waiting for what my fate is. Feeling scared out of my mind, I hear these sweet words coming out of her mouth. Wolfie, why are you so scared? I know that you had a past with Molly. Do you forget I sat in the same classroom with the two of you and saw quite a bit of PDA that has happened? I pull her in for a hug. I let her know my greatest secret. I'm just so scared that I'm going to lose you. You are my everything, Avia. You're what was missing that I didn't even know was missing. I kiss the top of her head. Well, before we intervene in their relationship, let's wait until Doc Evers' friend gets here and sheds some light on Molly's situation. Besides, I have a hot date with Ollie. He's a little pissed that he hasn't seen Storm for a month. I start laughing. It will just get worse. He is mated to a soon-to-be alpha king after all. Come on, let's get back home. We're in the car when my love asks me some questions. I never thought she would ask me. Wolfie, I need to ask you some things. You told me about your aunt and uncle and I can understand your concerns about faded mates. I know that you just found out not too long ago about them being chosen mates and not faded. What I want to ask you is why you were drawn to Molly in the first place. I know about the pills, but I want to know what you were feeling. Taking my hand off the steering wheel, I grab her hand off her lap and bring it to my mouth for a kiss. I guess it's time to bare my soul to you. Honestly, I was so confused at the time. My mom and dad were training me nonstop on the training field. You may not know, but my mom is a scary warrior. That woman can certainly move just like you. It must be a Luna thing. Then they were both pushing me on this faded mate business. Nothing else mattered but getting my faded mate. It scared the shit out of me. I really just wanted to run away from all of their expectations. I mean hell. We were just starting high school. I didn't want to think of all the responsibilities I would have to deal with four years from then. Molly suddenly showed up one day. Long curly blonde hair, petite with a knocked out body flirting nonstop with me. It took a couple of months, but I finally gave in and started having her hang around us. She made me feel like I was free acting my own age, having fun for once. I honestly don't know if it was the pills or me wanting an escape, but I fell for her. Or thought I did. Then you came around and turned everything upside down. Avia looks at me, nodding her head. I just have one more question for you. Do you still love her? My heart just dropped to the bottom of my stomach. She is not going to like the answer I give her I just know it. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Yes, I do still love her, but not in the way you are thinking. I love her as a friend. I want to make sure she is safe and taken care of by whoever is with her. Do I love her romantically? No. Just thinking about what we did in the past turns my stomach. I feel for her what you feel for Ollie. Goddess. I hope I explained what I'm feeling correctly. I look straight out at the road as I'm driving. I'm still holding her hand. I needed it for confidence while I bared my soul to her. I don't know why, but I don't want to let her hand go. She squeezes my hand. Thank you for telling me. I think I understand more now. What and how you got to where you were when we found our mate Bond. I want to have a date night with you on Saturday at 6 p.m. What do you say? I glance over to her and I get a huge smile on my face. I would love to have a date night with you, love. Let's get you home and to Ollie before he hurts me. Avia laughs. Are you scared of Ollie? I pull into the parking lot by the pack house. Uh. Yeah, I've seen that guy fight. Not to mention he is the soon-to-be second alpha king. 
I laugh as we get out of the car. I walk Avia to her door and give her a kiss on her cheek. I'll see you later, love. Avia's POV. I go into my room and start doing a jig. I finally believe it. After all this time, I really believe that he actually just might love me. The way he has been acting towards me and how he has stayed far away from Molly but had no problem helping her when she needed him to. The way he was so honest with me when I asked him questions about River and Molly. He answered honestly knowing that I could get very upset with him. Then in the car, he wouldn't let my hand go the whole time he answered my questions. Now I just have to put my plan into motion for our date night. I take a shower and put on my jammies. I then hook up my laptop to the TV and set up Supernatural. It's the TV show that Ollie and I have gotten hooked on. The poor boy is in love with Dean. Ollie says he looks exactly like Storm. My poor BFF is missing his faded mate. All of a sudden, my door slams open and in walks the drama queen himself. Okay, woman. I need chocolate and Dean, not necessarily in that order. Hell, sex with Storm would be even better, but I don't think that is going to happen for a while. I see tears welling up in his eyes. He misses his faded so much. I go over and give him a big bone-crushing hug. I know he needed it. He pushes me away. Okay, enough of that. We have girl talk to do. He says, jumping on my bed in a sitting position. I look at him. Are you sure you're okay? If not, I can figure out something else. Ollie looks at me. Girl, I am your BFF. No one else. So, let's talk. Tell me what I need to know. I smile at him. No one can keep Ollie down. Apparently not even his mate. Who is MIA? I know deep down how he is feeling though. I can see it in his eyes. But if he doesn't want to talk about it, we won't. I crawled up on the bed sitting next to Ollie. I grabbed a hold of his hand and told him what I needed help in doing. Ollie listens to everything before laughing, then smiling at me. Oh girl, you came to the right place. We need some toys and sexy lingerie. I have got the perfect place. Get up and get dressed. We are going out. Avia's POV. I'm in my room. I just got up and showered. I'm getting ready to go to the clinic with Emerson to find out what Molly's results are. Doc Evers' friend got in late last night from what Emerson texted me. They were up all night running tests. Remembering what I did last night with Ollie has my face in flames. I got all the information I could possibly want and more. All Ali did was laugh at me, saying how sheltered I have been my whole life. I shook my head. No matter how sheltered I am, I have a plan and I'm going to follow through with it. I was just putting on my shoes. Oh, when there's a knock at my door. Come in. Emerson comes walking in with a tray and a smile. Good morning, love. Are you hungry? I smile at my handsome mate. Absolutely. What did you bring me? He sits down the tray and takes the cover off. Steam comes off of the platter. There's tons of eggs, bacon, fried potatoes, along with my favorite blueberry pancakes. He also remembered coffee and OJ. I dig in with nothing else being said. I have my mouth full. I look up and see Emerson smiling at me not eating. I swallow my food. What do I have a hole in my lip? I look down, checking that I didn't have food on my clothes. I have a major problem with missing my mouth when eating. I just enjoy eating so much. I don't take my time. I just shovel it in. He smiles at me, shaking his head at me, leans over and with his thumb wipes away some ketchup from the corner of his mouth, sticking his thumb into his mouth and sucking it off. 
My face flames red, but I didn't run away this time. We make our way into Molly's room. She is still lying there as still as death. Doc Evers walks in with a very tall, thin, pixie-styled red-haired woman. The woman is striking, and it looks like she has her sights set on our own Doc Evers. Hey, Doc, is there any news? Doc Evers looks up at me and smiles a small smile. Alpha Emerson, Luna Avia, I would like you to meet Marissa. Marissa Alpha Emerson and Luna Avia will soon be taking over the pack. Marissa smiles at us, shaking both of our hands. Nice to meet you. Thank you for allowing me on your land. I hope I can help your friend. I look up to her and respond. She is not just a friend, she is a part of this pack making her family. Emerson nods at me with a smile on his face and love in his eyes. Emerson looks at Marissa. Let's get to business. Do you have any clues as to what's going on with Molly? Marissa goes to the side of Molly's bed. She moves aside Molly's hair to reveal a star birthmark right behind her right ear. I don't know how much you know about Molly, but I can tell you that the vampires are going to want her back really badly. Molly is very special. Not only is she the only hybrid born in hundreds of years, but she is also a part of the royal house. Emerson speaks up, then why would her father send her here to seduce me? Does this mean that Oscar is the new king of the vampires? Marissa looks at us questioningly. Oscar? Do you mean Oscar Marcet? There is no way that he can be her father. He is a nobody, a butler in the royal house. Mind you, I broke away from the vampire kingdom long before the war started. My mate before he died was a wolf. So, I have never agreed to the war. Oscar is not and never will be a royal. He must have an agenda. I wish we knew what. Nodding my head, I look at Emerson. Marissa looks back at Molly. Her current situation is because she is a hybrid. It is a copying mechanism that her mind has done to her body. Evers had caught me up to what has been happening lately with her. With all the stress, losing her boyfriend, dealing with a witch, and being rejected by her soulmate has caused this. I have taken some of her blood to analyze. We should have the results in 24 to 48 hours. Emerson spoke up. We will assign guards around the clock on this floor and outside the clinic. Is there anything else we can do to help? Doc Evers looks over to Emerson as he is writing on a clipboard. We need her mate, now. Or she might not make it. We can't say for certain, but she needs his blood. I stand up, grabbing Emerson's hand and pulling him with me. As we walk out the door, I look back at both of the doctors. We will see what we can do. I pull Emerson with me till we are outside of the clinic. We start walking towards the pack house. Emerson, Molly is a royal. We need to do everything we can to make sure she stays alive. We have no choice but to get River back here. We need to confer with the Alpha and Luna. Emerson stops and pulls Avia into his embrace. You have the most gentle and caring soul. Doing everything to help a person that almost ruined our mate bond. Goddess Avia, you blow my mind every day. I learn something that makes me love you more. Emerson's kisses me like no one's business. I could just eat him up right now. I push him away. Come on, let's go talk to your father. We reach the Alpha's office door and knock. I hear that it come a response before I open the door. I most defiantly don't want to walk in on the Alpha and Luna, that's for sure. We walk in and the Alpha has his Luna on his lap massaging her big baby bump. They both look at us. About time you two showed up. Did you stop by the clinic and check up on Molly? We had already talked to Doc Evers and his faded mate. We both look up at her surprised. Emerson is the first to respond. Faded mate? 
You mean Marissa is Doc Evers' faded mate? Wow. Lucky bastard. Avia elbows him in his side while all three of them laugh. After everyone clams down, we take a seat in front of the Alpha's desk. The Alpha starts our little meeting. Okay, so we have found out that we have a vampire royal on our pack lands. I have put some trusted wolves on her with guard duty around the clock. I'm not just worried about vampires coming for her, but wolves thinking that they can kill her. She is an important ally that can help bring peace to werewolves and vampires. So, tell me what you two have learned. Emerson leans forward in his seat. Molly is not just an ally, but the key to bringing werewolves and the vampires together in peace. Dad, we have to get River back here quick. Avia and I found out why Molly is comatose. She met her mate and he walked away from her. Dad, Mom, River is her fated mate or soul mate, whatever you want to call it. We need him before she gets any worse. The Alpha and Luna sat there stunned. You could see them processing all the information by their facial expressions. The Luna looks at her Alpha. Wow, it just doesn't stop. Goddess, can't we just have a couple of days of peace and quiet? The Alpha leans forward and gives his Luna a kiss on her forehead. We will get through this baby. None of them have cell phones on them. They have been traveling in wolf form so they are traveling very light. They should be checking in, in a day or two. I'm sorry, but that is the quickest we can get in touch with them. We can send a couple of warriors to scout them out. It might be quicker. Nodding my head, I look at my mate, then at the Alpha and Luna. We can't let anything happen to either one of them. They need to be protected. They are the key to both the werewolf and vampire kingdom's future. Not to mention they are both a part of our pack. Emerson gives me a kiss on top of my head. We will make sure of it, love. We will know more when Molly's blood tests are back. Looking at his dad. Anything else dad, mom? The alpha shakes his head no. Not today. Go take care of your mate. She needs some TLC. Emerson stands up, taking my hand and pulls me up with him. Come on mate, let me feed you and we can watch a movie while cuddling on the couch. I walk behind him like a zombie, still thinking of everything that is going on. Emerson's POV After, I fed Avia and we watched some chick flick that I didn't even pay attention to. I dropped her off at her room and made my way to my car out in the parking lot. I made my way to a worse bar that's in town. They only cater to worse and supernaturals. I get to the bar and, lo and behold, Drake is there with a chick already hanging off of him. I sit down next to him and order myself the strongest drink they have with Wolfsbane. I need to take the edge off. I'm a couple of drinks in. Drake is off on the dance floor with a bunch of females. A nice looking were. I don't know what breed comes up to me. Hey, sexy. You looking for some fun? I look at her. She's cute. Long brown hair, baby blue eyes, thin with long legs. As tempting as you are, I have to give you a strong no. Sorry, I'm a taken male. She takes my drink. Your loss. She walks away. I laugh. Well, that's one way to get a free drink. I kept downing drinks without having anyone else trying to talk to me. It gets late and I notice that hardly anyone is left in the bar. I ask for another drink and I feel a hand on my shoulder. He doesn't need any more to drink Duke. Thanks for giving me a call. I look up at my dad. Yeah. Thanks Duke for calling my dad on me. You do know I'm no longer a pup, right? Duke laughs, turns and walks away. My dad sits down beside me and sighs. I know I'm a fuck up dad. You don't need to tell me. I just needed to blow off some steam, 
not to mention that I'm sexually deprived right now. Laughing, my dad looks at me. Avia, making you wait for it, huh? I can feel my face turn bright red. It's horrible, dad. I can't even look at her without getting hard. Man, I love being around her, but it's killing me at the same time. My dad gets up, walks around the bar, and gets both of us a cola. He slides one to me and says, I'm going to tell you something that I know you heard your mom make references to but never have been told about it. Coming back around the bar, he retakes his seat. Before I met your mother, I was a very randy young alpha. Matter of fact, Drake acts a lot like I did. Then, at a full moon get together, I met your mother. She was the most beautiful she-wolf I had ever seen. We had a great half an hour together before all my one-night stands started coming up to me wanting to get frisky. That is not something that you want your faded mate to see or know about. That she-wolf knew how to test me in every way before she finally let me touch her. Not as long as you have had to wait. Or situations are a little different. Give it time. Good things like our faded mates are worth it. Smiling at my dad because I could see my mom doing what he explained. I look down into my drink. Dad, what am I going to do about this situation with River and Molly? The problems that they are going through is partly my fault. My dad turns his body towards mine. Emerson, look at me. He waits until I turn and look him in his eyes before continuing. It is not just your fault. Ever since you were a kid you have always thought everything is your fault. The vampires and Molly had a hand in all of this too. You need to stop being so hard on yourself all the time. Forgive yourself. I felt like I was a little kid again. I leaned over and gave my dad a bone-crushing hug. I love you, dad. Thank you for coming for me. My dad smiles at me. Anytime, son. I love you. Now come on, let's get you home. If I'm not mistaken, you have a hot date later on tonight. I look at him surprised. Huh, I said. Laughing, he tells me. Son, it's 4 a.m. on Saturday morning. I ended up leaving my car at the bar and rode with my dad back to the pack house. When we got there, I went straight to my room and took a nice hot shower. I came out with just a towel wrapped around my hips. I face planted right into my bed and passed out. I must have been really tired. I woke up to hearing my phone dinging with messages. I fling my hand out to my bedside table, searching for my phone. Finally, I crack and I open, finding my phone, moaning with a hangover. Never again will I drink with Wolfsbane laced alcohol. I unlock my phone and see a message from Avia. Hey, Wolfie, hope you're ready for tonight. See you in a couple of hours. I look at the time. Shit, it's 4 p.m. I crawl out of my bed and take another nice hot shower. After getting out of the bathroom, I give Drake a call. Hello Alpha, you feeling okay? You sure were downing the drinks last night. I growl at him. I'm fine. Did you get everything set up for me? I can hear Drake talking to someone. It's muffled. Like he put his hand over the mouthpiece. Then he comes back to talk to me. Yuppers. Everything is set and ready for you too. Hope you too enjoy. Nodding my head to myself because obviously he can't see me. Thank you, Drake. I owe you one. After getting ready for my date, I come running out of my room. Emerson, where are you in such a hurry to go? I skid to a stop. Hey, mom. I go over and give my mom a kiss on her forehead. I'm on my way to the gardens to pick flowers for Avia. We have a date in about half an hour. I watch my mom get up, walk over to the counter pulling some ribbon out of a drawer. You know your father never showed up with anything but himself when dating me. 
I'm so glad I raised you to think of the little things. While saying this my mom was taking her beautiful purple calla lilies with green shoots, tying them together with the ribbon. Mom I'm so sorry if I let you down with all that has happened. She walks over to me with a small smile on her face. You didn't let me down son. You followed your heart you may have been confused for a while but you stayed true to yourself. Shaking my head, no at her. I don't understand how dad and you don't blame me. River and Molly being faded mates and because what I did with Molly. Goddess's mom. Molly and I did so many things in front of River and Drake. How could he ever forgive me or her for that matter? I don't want to lose either one of them as friends. My mom takes a seat next to me. You think too much. Have faith that everything will work itself out. It won't be easy. All of you are so hard-headed. It comes honestly from being an alpha team. All the strong auras. Do me a favor. Take one step at a time and don't forget to breathe. Nodding my head at her agreeing, she says. Now tell me what you have planned for tonight. I get a smile on my face, blushing a little. I had Drake set up for us to have a picnic at the waterfalls. Food, music, and wine. See where the night leads us. I hope I can hold myself back. It's getting very hard. My mom chuckles a little at my blushing face. Wow, I never thought I would see my son embarrassed about his faded mate. If you want her so badly, why not let her know? If you're not telling her, she probably doesn't think you want her. She-wolves can be very self-conscious about these kinds of things. Oh, my goddess, I didn't think about that. My mom is completely right. I don't want my love thinking that I don't want her. I will make sure she knows how much I want her tonight. I won't push her into doing anything though. You're right mom. I will make sure there is no confusion on that front. I say getting up from my seat to leave. Also, the Alpha King called. They should be back tomorrow afternoon. River will be with them. We will also have a meeting at 1 p.m. Oh. Don't forget the flowers, son. Also make sure to treat your Luna like the queen she is. I take the flowers. You know I will. She is the love of my life. I will always treat her like a queen. I turn to see Todd standing in the doorway. Don't hurt her again or I'm gonna sick Ollie on you. He sees my face drain of color. You are so not funny Todd. Smiling evilly, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm being very honest. He starts laughing as I go running out of the room. River POV It has been 24 hours since I have found my faded mate. I am so confused that I don't know what to do. I'm sitting inside a bar in the closest town from where we are camping. We are just now finishing up with the last pack. Then we will be on our way back home. Home. I really don't know if I want to go home right now. I have a mate. I'm so happy to find my faded. But then I think of who she is and my heart drops down to my stomach. I don't know what to do. I order another mixed drink and yes, it has wolfsbane in it. I know so not like me the reliable soon to be beta of the pack. I remember my mom telling the story of her and my dad. They grew up together in the same group of friends. My dad always wanted to date my mom all through high school and she always turned him down, telling him that she was waiting for her faded mate. From what she said, he always responded with I am your faded mate. I guess my mom never believed him until the day of her 18th birthday. His birthday was a week before hers and he just sat back and waited for her birthday. When she realized that he was her fated she never held back with him again. They have such a loving relationship. I have never seen them fight, some disagreements, but that's it. I'm about six drinks in when someone sits next to me. I look over and see my dad with a worried expression. 
Hey, Dad, what's up? You need to forget to? I look at my dad in the eye. What's wrong? Did something happen to mom? My dad finally speaks up. No, nothing is wrong at home. How about you? Are you okay? I look at my dad again and I just know. You already know the answer to that, don't you? Nodding his head, my dad tells me. Yes, I guess after you left something happened to where it was found that you're Molly's fated mate. Now I'm pissed. How dare she tell anyone our private business without asking me first? Wow, it figures she would open her mouth. She is good at doing that. My dad looks surprised at the aggression in my voice. Son, I don't know what your anger is about, but why did you walk away from your own fated mate? She is your gift from the goddess. I look at my dad, sighing in defeat. Dad, it's so complicated. I have watched her be with Emerson for three years. I have seen them do things that I can't unsee. It's not that I don't want her. It's that I'm afraid I'm going to hurt someone. Maybe her. Shaking my head, I push away the full drink sitting in front of me. Well, you need to know that since you walked away from her, she has slipped into a coma. She needs your blood to feed her since she has found you as her soul mate. I jump up to run out the door and my dad grabs me and sits me back down like I am five years old again. Listen to me, I'm not done. Molly is a hybrid you need to stay close to her. She will die if you reject her. She is not strong enough to withstand a rejection. Also, you know that they need the blood of their soul mate. They can only feed from them after finding them. So, what I am saying is, if you want your fated mate, you need to figure out what you're going to do now. Nodding my head. I hear you, Dad. Now I'm going to my mate. Where is she, Dad? Standing up. She is at the clinic on the PAC territory. Be safe. I'll see you when I get there with the others. I get outside and run in human form till I'm out of town. Once I reach the forest line, I jumped into the woods, changing into my wolf form. The wind felt great going through my fur. Freedom of the world not only if I could forget all my problems. I just can't get the pictures of Molly being naked in Emerson's arms, having sex in front of me. So many times, I couldn't even give a count of how many times. It breaks my heart that my faded mate didn't wait for me, but gave herself freely to someone else in front of me. Then I just can't blame it on her, but also on Emerson too. Molly is new to the supernatural world, but Emerson has known about faded mates as long as I have and, because of his insecurities, I don't know where I stand with my own faded mate. Shit, I wonder how our soon-to-be Luna is taking all this information. Oh goddess, I said no to her and walked out on her. I wasn't rejecting her. I just needed time to comprehend what happened. I hurt my faded mate so badly that she fell into a coma. Oh goddess, I'm so sorry. Please don't take my faded mate from me. I promise I will treat her better. I will put her on a pedestal and worship her for the rest of our days. Please let me get there in enough time to give her my blood. Hell, I will give her every last drop if that is what she needs. I can't lose her. No matter what has happened in the past, she is mine. I reached the Packlands. As soon as I entered, there were guards surrounding me. Beta Rivers, we were not told to expect you. Hold on please while we clear you to enter. Nodding my head, all I can think about is this has never happened. Things must be getting serious enough for them to actually stop me, the soon-to-be Beta. I'm sitting there thinking that at least I don't have to worry about anything happening to the ones that mean the most to me. Beta River, you're clear to go through. I turn back into wolf form to run the next five miles to the pack house. I make it to my room and find Alpha Roger waiting for me. I grab a rope, 
putting it on I look over to the Alpha. Alpha, what can I do for you? The Alpha looks at me. Take a seat at River. I would like to have a quick chat with you before you go to the clinic. I sit down across from him at the table. Okay, Alpha. I take it my dad called you after I left him. Nodding his head, he looks intently at me. After a couple of minutes, I start to fidget. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out how to say what I need to say. The Alpha side rearranging himself. River, you're a very important part of not just this pack but our family. You have helped Emerson now for many years. Now it seems your Alpha group is in need of a lot of emotional help. From what Emerson has told me, you're Molly's faded mate. That there may be some problems with how you're taking the news. I put my hand up to stop what he is saying. Whoa, hold up, Alpha. I don't mean no disrespect, but you don't need to worry about me. I just needed some time to think before taking action. She is my faded mate. No matter what, I will stand by her side unless she tells me to leave. I know it will be rough, but we will work it out. That's good to hear, River. But there is a really important piece of information you need to know. Molly is of royal blood in the Vampire Kingdom. We are not sure exactly who she is to them, but it's going to put a huge target on her back and yours too. Be very careful, River. Protect her with your life. We will be having a meeting as soon as your father and the Alpha King and his son get here. Holy shit, Molly is of royal vampire blood. I'm going to visit with her now. I will see you tomorrow. They should be here by then. I made my way to Molly's room. There is a guard at her door. He nods his head at me as I walk into her room. I walk up to the bed where Molly was lying. She looks like she could open her eyes and look at me anytime. I take her hand in mine. Sitting down on the chair next to her bed. I don't know if you can hear me or not. I just want you to know I am so sorry for leaving you at school like I did. I don't know all the facts, but I'm sure I'm the main reason you're in here. I know it won't be easy, but I don't want to lose you before I even get a chance with you. Please come back to me. I stay with her for a couple of hours. Before I get up to leave. I remember my dad saying something about her needing my blood and being her soulmate. I stand up and let a claw out to make a slice on my wrist. I pry her mouth open and let the blood drip into her mouth. I put my wrist right on her mouth and she suddenly latches on, sucking. I feel her teeth elongate and pierce my wrist. You would think that it would hurt, but it doesn't. It actually is turning me on. By the time she is done, I have a raging boner. All that happens is her teeth retracted. She didn't even open her eyes. I lean over her and give her a kiss on her forehead. Feeling the tingles. I will be back tomorrow morning, princess.